Hi, today we're going to look at Tomasello's ideas and how they uh, influence education and how they can be used to support developing students. Uh, so in terms of background, uh, there's a significant difference between or one of the big differences between apes and uh, humans is shared intentionality. And shared intentionality is uh, if you look at apes, for example, they will um, cooperate uh, to achieve a task, but in the end, they are self-centered in what they are looking for at the end. So the goal, uh, the goal might be uh, shared, but the end product might be uh, individualized. So for the ape, um, if they look at food, uh, then they might cooperate to gain or garner food, but then uh, at the end they might fight over uh, who gets the food. And uh, <clears throat> whereas humans, uh, they'll use shared intentionality and to cooperate to achieve a goal. And um, the goal, the end product is mutual. So if we use an example there as to build a shelter, uh, they'll cooperate to build a shelter and then they will share the shelter um, themselves uh, as, a, as a group. Uh, after. And you can also look at writing. So some of the writing that we do uh, for our uh, courses or whatever uh, could also be looked at in this way in terms of uh, will an individual write a piece, another individual will look at it and massage it and give their ideas um, and they'll go back and forth and ultimately um, the ideas are accepted or not and what the ultimate piece is is that the end piece of writing is uh, better than if one individual did it completely on their own because of the input and the ideas from the uh, second person. So <clears throat> one of the questions here is how uh, even though we're looking at uh, Tomasello here, we can also link in the question as we go through this is, uh, is this an example of um, emergent properties and potentials where the end product is greater than the sum of the parts. And so if we look at the writing example, then is the end product uh, better than if the individual wrote it completely on their own or two individuals wrote one piece on their own uh, with independently as compared to two individuals writing a piece, sharing them as we do in Jeff's class, and then building and growing uh, from there. Um, so how does this shared intentionality support the learning of developing students? And so one critical piece here is that, is that it is developing students and that we look at. And the implication is, is that developing students, I would say, uh, would not necessarily learn best in isolation. So with this concept of shared intentionality, it's not where you can do it on your own. You need other people to work with you uh, and if you're going to have this concept of shared intentionality. And uh, uh, it would imply that there's a minimum of two people. So, and if you look at the pod system in the school system today, then maybe that there is uh, certainly a, a reflection of this, uh, of Tomasello's uh, concept of um, um, shared intentionality. And also, if you consider it in terms of the developing students, then the pod system is used more at the primary elementary than it is at uh, the junior high and the high school. It still is used, but uh, it's certainly used more at those developing levels. Uh, one of the other things that um, uh, Tomasello, uh, as a basis of this shared intentionality, uh, or an underpinning, is recursive mind reading. And so what is it, uh, or, and recursive mind reading depends on the um, comprehension of ling linguistic complex uh, questions. So there has to be uh, enough language development uh, has to have occurred in order for the, uh, uh, to, for the participants to understand these complex questions. And ultimately, the recursive mind reading, what it is, is it's where I know what you know, and it's a reciprocal uh, piece whereby there's there's a common understanding, um, and there's a, a 
common language and a common understanding. Uh, a second uh, piece that it involves is joint goals. So, and, and this here I, I look at as, as an evolutionary piece that uh, in terms of uh, social development, if you look at Simon Priest with his uh, stages of group development, it's uh, uh, storming is the first piece whereby they, uh, you know, there's a, people are not in sync. Uh, forming is where the uh, group begins to develop and people learn what's expected and what are the talents and abilities of different individuals. Norming is the third phase. And so, uh, and the norming piece is once you start to develop these joint goals, then you know what the norms and expectations and behaviors are. So uh, <clears throat> these uh, joint goals uh, require significant communication and understandings between the people. They add a crystallization of, uh, of thought, clarity, and focus. And uh, that all that is required in order for this uh, to occur. And so in terms of developing students, these are all good processes that will help their learning by crystallization of thought, uh, bringing clarity to their thought, and giving them direction. Uh, the third piece is joint attention to that which is relevant to the goal. So this here is ultimately the focus, which was uh, kind of what I implied in the last one, uh, is the focus whereby both participants or all participants bring attention to what is necessary to achieve that goal. And um, so uh, I mentioned Elderbus, uh, Elderbus earlier, and uh, so would this imply that uh, Elderbus emergent properties and potentials, powers and potentials uh, of the whole are greater than the parts? And uh, I would kind of think that this is a, a is kind of a good example and a good a good segue really between the two. Um, one of Tomasillo's uh, underpinning themes is human communication is directed towards uh, shaping normative behavior, and so uh, from his point of view, it would appear that educatively, then human uh, human com communication is a part of the process not only of communication, but also of culture in terms of norms. And even though different cultures have different uh, norms, uh, the group that you operate within, uh, the communication and the language uh, is a part of that process in developing normative behavior. And by developing normative behavior in developing students, it allows them to fit in. The question that I raised in this here is for those that don't fit in or are uh, marginalized or are outside of the norm, then is the process accommodating to them in terms of bringing them in in an inclusive or equitable manner? And uh, so, and that there could be students at the top, okay, or at, at the lower end, at developing students. So uh, that there is it for today. I'm Tomasello, and have a great day.